A lot of people say they want a career in TV, but how's that likely to pan out? Well, the chances are it might look something like this. Oh, look, it's you, a fresh-faced, nigh-on-fetal 21-year-old finishing your media studies degree with an earnest 15-minute documentary about a local homeless man called Billy. It's well-received by your fellow students. You pass your exams, receive a diploma in mediated enablism, send your CV to 10 million different companies, and finally get a reply from a production company offering you a job as a runner. Hey, it's the bottom rung, but it's a start. Your dreams of making a difference with your work seem to be coming true, and you arrive in London with a head full of stardust and immediately email all your old friends and crow about your glamorous new telly career. As a running your job largely consists of dogs bodying around at the behest of producers performing whatever tasks they see fit at a moment's notice. Your wages aren't great, so to make ends meet, you spend most of your nights on the bathroom floor of some cramped shared accommodation way out in Zone Q. But because you live so far away, this means you have to go to bed at four and wake up at five, ready for another day spent waiting hand and foot on the talent, an overpaid gonk, earning 20000 an episode who treats you like half price shit. He hurls coffee over you day in, day out, and at the end of each evening you wind up desperately wringing out your top for sustenance. After a year of running, you get your first promotion. Well done, you're now a junior researcher. Your new job mostly consists of typing things into a search engine and printing them out for the producer, who merely smiles, says they're not quite good enough, and asks one of the proper researchers to do better while you have to help the runner make tea. Said runner, who's supposedly beneath you, turns out to be a backward, feckless cretin who spends most of his time loafing around trying to act like a cooler-than-thou skate but he's also the MD's son, which means you have to do his work for him while a menopausal producer fawns over his every stupid gesture. Before long, he comes to symbolise everything you despise about our cruel and godless universe. Look at him. Hate him. Hate him. Hate him. Hate him. Meanwhile, there's someone else working on the show you've developed a doomed crush on, which is psychologically unhealthy but pleasantly distracting. This is simply the first instance in a repeated production cycle in which, devoid of contact from your regular friends and family, you form intensely close bonds with select co-workers. Now you're on a roll and you jump up the career ladder again, becoming a researcher! Cool! On a show where grieving people get gunged in a skewed bid to cheer them up. Your duties include cajoling them into signing release forms. Dispirited and disgusted with yourself in your few moments off, you simply stare at the wall. You haven't seen your family in a year and your personal life's in tatters. But hey-ho, at least you're working in telly, yeah? Before long, you've become assistant producer, which sounds more impressive but also means you're doing more work than ever. Especially because f**kface here is the producer and he's a lazy, boorish imbecile who spends all his time arsing about and lazily assaulting the runners. But as luck would have it, one of the contestants dies during a gunging. Manslaughter is generally frowned on in telly, so the producer is sacked. And since you're the one with the most experience, you get his job. Congratulations, you finally made it to producer level, and for a while at least you're loaded. Once series two of Grievers Get Gunged is over, you're out of work, scouring TV job websites and small ads. You eventually get a job in development and spend six months brainstorming a series of grief tormentation formats in which the recently bereaved are poked in the eye, goaded with sticks and so on. Soon you're pitching a despicable show to a commissioner who looks familiar because lo and behold it's Nepotist Shithead Boy. Unfortunately he likes it and the new show Sick on a Widow becomes a ratings hit. You end up making 18 consecutive series of it while your dream of making serious programming flies ever further out of reach. Eventually the public tire of cheery abuse of the grieving and you find yourself pushing 40 with a string of broken relationships behind you and no career path stretching out ahead. You approach every production company you can think of begging for a job but by now in telly terms you're hopelessly over the hill. With no family or lovers to speak of your sole entertainment is flopping on a sofa bitterly watching programs squinting at the names of your more successful co-workers in the credits which thankfully you can't f***ing read because of credit squeezing. And that's exactly how TV works! Uh -huh.